Hello, this is Carla at Fun Schooling with the Williams School of Passion and Pursuit. And I have another question that I want to ask um, answer because so many people ask me this. The last video we did on how do unschoolers or child-led learners learn to read. Well, this one is going to be on how do child-led learners or unschoolers learn math. And I get this question so often, and to be honest with you, I totally get it when people are, this just freaks people out, because that was one of the main things that concerned me when we decided to transition from a very rigid traditional homeschooling method to a more child-led learning, interest-led learning, unschooling, whatever you want to call it, um, process. So um, when we were transitioning for a very long time, we kept our workbooks and math. Um, we we kind of let go of everything else, but we were so afraid to let go of math until we started seeing them learn math on their own. And we were like, wait a second here. Now I get what people are talking about. This really can be done. And so you're going to have every child that is different. Every child is going to have a strength. Every child is going to have a passion and a desire to go in a direction in their life that is different from another. And so you kind of have to approach it differently with each kid. Each of my children approach math differently, and so I have to approach it differently with them. But two things, to be honest, how we learn math is through living books, through a lot of reading, and also through life. Those are the main two ways that we learn. Um, I keep books um, here in our home on math. And so I got a couple of them I want to share with you. Um, Life of Fred, we absolutely love it. Some of my children use it as just a fun read aloud. A few of my kids absolutely love it and they learn a lot from it. So we have completed with my older two, we've completed the elementary series and we're about to um, order the junior high series because they are now in sixth and seventh grade. So <sighs> happy tears. They're growing up. <laughs> but um, I also keep several, several, several books on hand around the house um, that teach math through reading. Funny stories. I keep uh, books on riddles, um, number games, board games that deal with math. Obviously, Monopoly is one of them. We have um, games that deal with money and things of that nature. But I love this series. This series, the one that I've been showing you, is called uh, Math is Categorical. And so the little ones absolutely love this, but it's a good uh, reminder for the older kids as well. But we have um, a lot of books. Now for the older kids, obviously there are some concepts that they will get to know, um, that they need to get to know as they get older. And uh, there are certain books that I ordered for the older kids that would help in those kinds of things. And again, we do games. We do a lot of um, having them calculate uh, their own bills at the store, how, having them understand how to uh, do very basic um, checkbook ledgers or things of that nature. So we keep a lot of those kinds of books. So they learn a lot through reading. A lot. Um, one of my favorite ways to teach math is through word problems. And when I was in school, word problems gave me heart palpitations. I hated word problems because I always felt like there was a trick. They were trying to trick me. Well, really, word problems were nothing but how math relates to your life. And so what do I do? I try my hardest to try to relate math and numbers to our everyday life. When we are cooking, when we're out shopping, um, when we're watching something on television, or when we're reading a book and it's relating to that. Um, when you transition into this kind of child-led learning, um, unschooling method, you notice you kind of get a, a new sense, so to speak. You learn how to read and see opportunities to teach that you never recognized before. And you recognize that math is all around us every day. And that's what I tell my kids. And um, so we try every chance that we get to um, unveil those layers of math um, in the things that they're doing every day. And we do keep workbooks on hand. We do not do a block schedule or math at a certain time every day. We don't even do math every day. But we keep those things available. And when, when we have an opportunity to teach a certain concept in math, um, then we will pull those workbooks out to help them understand how you would do that on paper, help them understand how it relates to their life. But it is more of an organic process versus a very schooly process. So math is being learned around here all the time from pre-K on up. And um, 
and we love the way it works. It, it, it works for us, and it is a very natural prog progress that we see happening with our children and them being able to relate numbers and math and money to everyday life versus just on paper. So we love it that way. Um, so it, it is very possible and very doable to be able to be an unschooler and to have children that know how to calculate and know how to do math, know living math as well as um, higher levels of math. And as they do get into higher levels of math where maybe um, manipulatives around the house <laughs> aren't doing the trick, we may um, sign them on to Khan Academy to show them a process that relates to whatever they're doing. Um, my son is very much into uh, taking apart computers and things of that nature and help him understand some of the concepts of design and engineering. Um, we've uh, signed on and enlisted the help of Khan Academy and some YouTube playlists to help us with those kinds of things. So as they grow, we make sure that our resource bucket, so to speak, grows so that we have more opportunities to share higher levels of learning and math and calculating with them. Um, as far as the littles are concerned, we don't buy a bunch of expensive uh, manipulatives that everybody says they ha you have to have. We use what is in our house. So if we have a bucket of shapes, then we use a bucket of shapes to do very basic, greater than, less than, equal to, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, um, what number comes before and after, all of those things that they say you need to sit down and doing a workbook we do hands-on um, we may use cars we have four boys so obviously we have hundreds of matchbox cars around the house we utilize everything that we have around us even dishes to be able to help them um, you know just yesterday I was explaining multiplication for the first time to one of my sons who had had never done multiplication before and he was interested because he saw his older siblings doing it and that is the benefit of having so many age groups in the home is that they learn from each other but he started asking questions like I want to do what they're doing and he's seeing them do things and figure things out in their head and he's like I want to be able to do that and so we're over dinner I did described you know while I was making dinner described what multiplication was how it worked and I used all the utensils I happen to be using at that time to show him and guess who's multiplying today so it's very important that you understand there's so many ways to get to the end result but I love 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 having a hands-on approach and allowing my kids to inquire and explore and figure things out as they go I believe that that um that is really what a future workforce is going to be looking for. Somebody that is an initiator, a starter, a researcher, someone that can figure out problems and be analytical and, and uh, be resourceful. So again, that's my two cents on math and unschooling or child-led learning. I hope that answered your questions. And if you have any other questions, just put them down there and I'll be more than happy to do a video to answer those. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.